This is lesson 5.1, solving quadratic inequalities in one variable. This is the first lesson in unit 5, which is on graphing inequalities and systems of equations. All right. So this one's going to build a little bit on uh, some of the stuff we learned about linear equations last year in grade 10, and some of the things that we've talked about dealing with quadratics this year. All right. So let's get uh, let's get started here. When the equal sign in a quadratic equation is replaced with an inequality sign, now I hope we know what I mean when I say inequality, I mean the greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than, equal to type signs, a quadratic inequality in one variable is formed. All right. So. We have, uh, this is just a reminder, I find a lot of students um, forget these, so I want to put those on here. Uh, I know a lot of you like to remember uh, things to deal with, alligators eating things. All I just remember is that this one kind of looks like an L, kind of looks like an L, so that's going to be the less than. All right, so that's what I'm going to do right here. So what we're going to do is we're basically looking at what happens when I take a quadratic, but then I put an in inequality uh, instead of an equal sign. How does that change things, right? So, I have a couple examples uh, that we're going to take a look at, and I think that'll uh, assist us. Example one says, look at y equals x squared minus 5x plus 4. So that's the um, parabola you see right there. And the first question says, when is it equal to 0? Well, as you can see, I'm essentially looking for the zeros. We see that it's equal to 0 at these two points right here. So I would say that it uh, is equal to 0 when x equals 1 and when x equals so those are my two solutions for that one. Well, how does it change, though, when I come down here and I use a greater than zero inequality? Well, let's see. It's saying, when is that graph greater than zero? Well, when they're saying greater than zero, folks, I want you to think, when is the graph above the x axis. It's just that simple. So hopefully you can see that the graph is above the x-axis in this point that I'm highlighting from there on and from there on right there, right? So basically when x's go from this point on that way and this point on that way. So that's all we need to discuss or to describe here. We will say that x must be, so for this region right here we'd say it has to be greater than 4 and we would say when x is less than 1 being that region over there. Okay. So I'll erase that all off. Now what we're going to look at is what would happen if I asked you when is it less than zero? So this time I'm looking when is it below the x-axis. And hopefully you see it's below right between these two points right here, basically in this region, right? So how do we describe that? Well, we say that x must be less than four and greater than one, all right? And so you know what that notation means. This notation implies between. We're basically say, saying that x can be anywhere between 4 and 1. Okay? So that kind of gets us started. That's what we're looking for right here. Uh, I find that as you practice this, you guys will get uh, better and better. I've broken it down into four different steps that uh, you need to do when you're trying one of these questions. All right? And then I'll, I'll lead you through one on the next side that's um, pretty straightforward where you don't have to really write anything. You can just kind of watch the video go, and then you can try one on your own in example uh, 3. So the steps say, move everything to one side of the inequality and factor. So we're still using those factoring skills. You're going to use the zeros to sketch a graph. Now when I say sketch, it means it does not need to be perfect. The only thing I really need is just the zeros to be accurate. As long as that happens, I'm going to be good to go. All right? the zeros, if you forgot what that means, those are sometimes known as roots. All right? You're going to write the solution to satisfy the inequality, and then uh, I definitely want you to do a, uh, a test at the end, basically a check, all right? So um, sometimes you don't need to do a check. This is a must-do for these type of questions. Okay. Let's go and give one a try. So example two says, solve the inequality 5x squared plus 13x minus 6 is greater than 0. So my step one, like I said on the first page, there is I want you to move everything to one side of the equation. Since this is already on the left-hand side of the equation, we're good to go. Now, I've done this example a little bit different than some that I do in the past because I've actually done most of the work for you already, so I'm just going to try to walk you through it. So, for instance, I had uh, this inequality right here, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to factor it as I normally would. So what I did right here, if you haven't figured it out, is I used the AC method. Okay, 
this is the method that I call anyways the AC method also called uh, factoring by decomposition so A times C we could give you negative 30 and then I looked for numbers that multiply to give you negative 30 that have a sum of that middle term 13 and they were of course 15 and negative 2 okay so I split this term up into being these two and then I looked, what can you factor from these first two terms? You can factor out a 5x, and so that leaves you with an x plus 3 here and an x plus 3 here. To make this one the same, then you need to take out a negative 2, and those are my two factors. So, I set them equal to 0, and I found out that these were where my two roots are at. All right. So, the next thing I would get you to do is don't worry about the inequality at all. Don't worry if it's greater than 0, less than 0, whatever. I just want you to simply um, write where those dots would be at. So I'm going to have a dot at negative 3, and I'm going to have a dot at 0.4, like so. Okay. Now, from here, I need to uh, clarify a couple things. All right. Um, you might have noticed that I used those open dots right there, and there's a reason I did that. So I'll draw you guys out a little note right here. Whenever you have a greater than or less than sign, I want you to use an open dot. Okay. And when you have um, an inequality such as greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, use a closed dot. All right. So that gives us that gives us some uh, idea that we are including those points. All right. So basically, whenever I see an open dot, it means that I'm not going to include those points. When I see a closed dot, it means I am going to include those points. Okay. So the next thing I would need to do is I would need to think. Okay, I know I have a parabola here. How do I know I have a parabola? Simply because I have this x squared at the top. All right. And another thing I need you to recall would be over on this side that we know what x squared graphs look like. F x squared gra graphs open up. All right. Negative x squared graphs open down. So by simply just looking at the coefficient right here, we see that we have a leading coefficient that's positive. So we know that the graph is going to be opening up like a cup. So we can give ourselves a little bit of a sketch that looks like so. So I don't really care how accurate it is. I just need to know if the graph's opening up or down and where it goes through those points. All right. And from here, step three says, since um, we have our inequality, we're looking for the area where the graph is above zero. Right? Why do I say above zero? Because I'm wondering, when is the graph meeting this inequality right here? So if you look at the graph, when is it above zero? Well, hopefully you can see it's from this point that we have right there going onward this way, it's above zero. And from this point going that way. All right. Basically, anything in this region in the middle is not above zero, so we don't want to include that. So if you look at how I would describe this, I would say I want x to be greater than 0.4, so that takes care of all of this region, and I want x to be less than negative 3, that takes care of all of that region. Okay. And so that's what I've written as my solutions right here. The next thing I did is we're on to the last step here. We, we've found our solutions, now we just need to do a check. Step four is to check, select one test point from each region. So, for instance, I will label these regions uh, just up here. Let's do this in black. We'll say that this is region one, two, and three. So in the first region, they said, uh, maybe I'll shrink this up. In the first region, they wanted you to pick something that was less than three. All right, so the number that they picked was uh, x equals negative four. So when you substitute that in, since that is a part of our solution region, it should satisfy it. So for instance, if you notice, they put in negative 4 all the way through here, and they end up getting 22. 22 is greater than 0 is what they ended up find out, finding out. Is that true? Yes. And so that's why that is a part of our solution region. Now, if we pick something in region 2 right here, something that's between um, negative 3 and 4, and 0.4, sorry, we should get it to be false. So I picked the test point. 0. Always try to pick something that's nice. So I pick 0 and I put it in there. And when you get that, you get negative 6 is greater than 0. Well, that's false, which means we should not include anything in that region. That makes sense. The last region that we need to check is region 3. And so we're looking for something that's greater than 0.4. The number I picked was x equals 1 right here. And of course, we should expect this to be true. And it turns out it is. We find out that 12 is greater than 0, so yes, it is a solution for us. Okay. Now, I did put a note down here at the bottom. It says it is not necessary to sketch the graph. 
An alternate method is to choose test points from the region. So um, I'm going to kind of deter you away from this, but it's possible for you to just ignore this whole sketch that we did and just go straight into the test points, but uh, I would advocate that you follow the same uh, way as I'm doing it. Okay. All right, example number three says solve the inequality negative 8x is less than or equal to negative 3 all multiplied by x squared minus 1. So this time I'm going to take you guys through everything rather than just kind of um, uh, us just talking about what the material already was written on there. Um, so step one says, move everything to one side of the inequality and factor it. So uh, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, distribute the negative 3 out. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to have negative 8x is less than or equal to, I'm going to distribute this out like so. So I'm going to get negative 3x squared plus 3. And then from there, like I said, I'm going to move everything to one side of the equation. The advantage of moving everything to the left-hand side right here is that it's going to make your x squared positive, and uh, I think that's what you're most comfortable with. So this becomes now 3x squared minus 8x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0. So from here now, you're going to have to determine how are you going to factor it. Sometimes you'll be able to factor without using the AC method. Sometimes you'll have to. This time we do. A times C is equal to negative 9. We're looking for numbers that multiply to give you negative 9 that have a sum of negative 8, and those are negative 9 and 1. So I'm going to write this now as 3x squared minus 9x plus x minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. So just to remind you what we're doing right here, by factoring, what I'm going to be able to find out is what the roots are of my graph, and that's going to assist me when I try to figure out what the solution regions are. So factoring this further, I'm going to take out now a 3x from the first two terms. That leaves me an x minus 3. And I can write an x minus 3 right here. So you always do whatever that is. Put that right there. What do I need to factor out to make this x minus 3? Well, it's already an x minus 3, so I'm going to factor out a positive 1. I'm noticing that a lot of students are forgetting to write what that sign is right there, so I'd encourage you to make sure you remember that. So from here, I have two roots. One of my roots is that I have 3x plus 1. And the other root is that I have an x minus 3, like so. Okay, So um, I'd ignore the inequality sign at this point. I don't want you to really worry, but all I would do is I would get you to take the 3x plus 1 and set it equal to 0 to figure out where that root's going to be at. When you do this, you end up getting 3x is equal to negative 1, or x is equal to negative 1 third. So that would be one of your roots. This other root's a little bit easier. This one's x minus 3 is equal to 0. It tells you that you're going to have a root at x equals 3. Okay. So on my graph right here, I'm going to sketch approximately where those points would be. So this time, since I have a um, less than or equal to sign, I can fill in the dots like so. That just means that it's going to be included. Those two points are going to be included. Now again, since if you look back up, uh, once I've moved everything to one side of the equation here, do you notice how my x squared term right here is positive? That means the graph is going to open up like so. So I can go ahead and sketch it will look something like that. Now I know the last two examples we've had them opening up. Don't always assume that they're all going to open up like that because if you have the graph going the opposite direction, uh, your uh, solution can be uh, completely different. So remember what we're looking for. We're looking for when is the graph less than or equal to zero. So this time we see that the graph is less than or equal to zero between here and here. So what is that region? We'd say that that region is when x is less than or equal to three and greater than or equal to negative one thirds. Okay. So from here, now what do we have to do? We have to go ahead and check your solution. So I, again, I'm going to label my solution regions. I'll call this region one, this region two, and this region three. Okay. So region one says that we have x is less than negative one thirds. And in this region, I'm going to pick a nice, easy test point. So I'm going to test x equals negative 1 into my original equation. So the original equation, maybe I'll just write it right up here so we can see it. We had the negative 8x is less than or equal to negative 3 onto x squared minus 1. Now, people often ask, do I have to put it into my original equation? You don't necessarily have to, uh, but that would be my suggestion. The reason why I like to put it into that one is if you've made any errors, it'll hopefully become evident uh, after this. All right. So in region one, we're expecting our answer to be false because that was not in our solution region. So if we put something in there, it shouldn't satisfy the inequality. So let's see what happens. If I test a negative one, I have negative eight times negative one 
is less than or equal to -1.